this one is Lady Slipper. Sorry, I couldn't read that upside down for some reason. And then this one is Sigma Pink. Alrighty. Then we have um, Nymphia. Nymphia, how do you say N that? Nymphia. Nymphia. That, yes. Sorry, I'm reading these upside down. Oh my gosh, it's all um, good. <laughs> this is the one I'm wearing, actually. And then here we have uh, Cor de Rosa. Cor that de is a fan favorite. And then we have over here, this is In the Saddle. All right, and I'm wearing, I think I'm wearing In the Saddle as my bronzer today. And Nymphea as my blush. All right, so just to give you an idea. Alrighty, let's dive into our next tutorial, beauties. Let's get the Sigma Cheek going on here. All right, so let's um, let's dive in. Are you swatching over there? I am, Perfect. yes, yes, yes. I'm almost done. <laughs> Perfect. All, All right. right, so take us through those swatches if you would, and yeah, then let's absolutely. learn some application tips. Absolutely, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go through the shades first. So I'm gonna kind of turn my elbow like so. I can never seem to swatch in a straight line, so no, I no, apologize. No. no worries at all. <laughs> Every time I'm like, uh, 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 not working. So this one here is gonna be Nymphea. Now Nymphea is gonna be that soft, kind of cool, earthy pink, has a little bit more of a peach tone to it. This one here is Lady Slipper. Lady Slipper is gonna be more of that cool, light, opaque pink. This one here is gonna be Corderosa. Corderosa is by far a fan favorite, especially of makeup artists and beauty enthusiasts. And this one's gonna be more of that earthy flush shade. This one here is In the Saddle, a matte bronzing shade, which is gonna be perfect for carving out the hollows of the cheek. And this one here is gonna be our powerfully pigmented Sigma Pink shade. Now this one is not for the faint hearted, I'll tell you that. This one here you're gonna to wanna to apply with more of a lighter, fluffier brush. Okay. Um, just because it's so heavily pigmented. Right, okay, now how do we, do we choose based on what our skin tone is or we do, do we choose based on which color interests us? I wanna say a little bit of both. Now what's the beauty of these Aura powders is they're they're a powder texture, but they almost feel like a cream. And so what's cool about them is they're extremely buildable in coverage. And so I would go with the shade preference that you love, and then you can build based on your skin tone. If you have a darker, richer skin tone and you're loving Lady Slipper, go ahead and just build a little bit more product on top of it to really give you that nice, cool, light pink shade. Cool. Yeah, so application-wise, I'm gonna take the F40 Large Angled Contour Brush. Now, Elise mentioned earlier in the show that I am not was never in the beauty industry up until five years ago, and I actually had no idea how to apply my blush, where does it go, where does your contour go? And this was the very first brush that was introduced to me. It's got a beautiful, nice, fluffy angle to the brush head, and so that's why it makes it so easy, because you just sweep back and forth and that's it, basic, basic. Well, and this brush is available on beautyiq.com. Yes. So definitely pick that up, uh, especially if you're picking up the blush. All right, so which shade are you choosing? So I'm choosing Nymphea. Oh, I, figured I love because, that. I, yeah, I figured because I have kind of more of a cool, darker look going up in the eyes, I wanted to brighten it up a little bit in the cheek area by using a soft peach pink. Well, I also love the fact that you're using that and I use that and we are very different skin tones. Oh, girl is way tanner than me, I'm jealous. <laughs> Got a little olive going on, guys. And it's actually real this time. <laughs> I love it. So what I'm gonna do is I like to do a patting motion, keeping the downward angle facing down. Oh, cool. So I like okay. to start at the apples of my cheek and I do a little bit of a stamping motion again. And the only reason for that is just to get that nice, beautiful coverage going before I blend. So again, a little product goes a long way because of the texture of these Aura powders. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do some stamping. And you can kind of already see just a little bit of a glow. Now what I'm gonna do after the stamping motion is just go back and forth along the temples now, and along the keep, apples of the cheek. Do you keep, which, how are you changing the brush now? Because before we kind of had it like in that upside down. Okay. Yes, and I actually keep it upside down. Oh, got it. So I keep the angle downward, I stamp downward, and then I go ahead and I sweep downward as well. Because mm. it just gives the kind of that nice, nice full diffused coverage. And I'm not one that likes a lot of blush, and so this is perfect for me, but because of these Aura powders and their build their buildability, we can go ahead and actually take this and layer on a little bit more. Okay. So I'm gonna actually start on the other side because my other cheek's lonely. I'm gonna go ahead and I mean, Stamp this look is really coming together. I have to say, like, the eyes are popping even more now with this amazing blush. Yes. Well, now we have the mascara in there, so mm -hmm. it's all coming together. Right. So I'm gonna do that stamping motion. 
And I then love this, back. beauties. I haven't heard the word stamping yet um, with application. I've heard stippling, I've heard all kinds of yeah, things, but not stamping. I like the word stamping just because it's really showing you what you're doing. I mean, you're stamping the product into your skin, right. but on top of that, that's what gives you the nice coverage. When you're doing the sweeping, yeah, it's blending the product, but the problem is sometimes, depending on the product you're using, it sweeps away. Oh, <laughs> and you don't want true. that. So I like to get it in the skin first before I actually do any of the blending. Well, it's also nice too, because with that stamping motion, you can be very specific about where it's placed. Oh, absolutely. So that looks this beautiful. Way. And now we are starting to look alive. <laughs> <laughs> I know, isn't that funny what a little blush does? Oh man, adds alive. just some nice glow to the cheeks. And some dimension to the face for sure. Oh, absolutely. Because remember beauties, when you put on your foundation, what you're doing is making your face all one color, right? So now we wanna bring that natural looking flush back into that cheek area. Look how, how lifted her cheekbones look. Mm, and it just girl. gives you like a very youthful glow, you yeah, know? Yeah, beautiful. All right, so that's Nymphia. Can we see those shades one more time on your yeah, arm? Yeah, absolutely. So we're gonna go ahead, oh, there we are. Yeah, you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Nymphea, this is gonna be that nice, soft pink peach. That's the one that I'm wearing on my cheeks today. This one here is Lady Slipper. Lady Slipper is gonna be more of that soft, light, cool, opaque pink. This one here is Corderosa. Now this is definitely a fan favorite, like I mentioned before. Gives more of that earthy, flushed, beautiful, neutral tone. This one here is In the Saddle, which I'm actually gonna use in just a moment here. Nice. And I'm gonna show you a little bit more about uh, contouring with that one. And this one here is Sigma Pink, which is that powerfully pigmented magenta shade. I can't believe the price on these, $14.25. Well, and look at the size of the I pan. I know, they're massive. I mean, these are gonna last you forever. Forever, <laughs> forever. Uh, forever. Okay, so then uh, let's see how you contour. Yes. So. When I mentioned earlier how, when I didn't really know where contour blush should be placed, this was the brush that was suggested to me. This is actually a great blush, or brush, can't speak, blush, brush, <laughs> um, for contouring as well. But one trick that I'll show you is someone taught me, if you take the handle upside down and you find kind of the indent of where the hollow of your cheek is, and you kind of place it underneath that ridge, Along this line here is where your contour should be placed. Okay. And that was something that blew my mind because I was thinking, well, I don't know where to contour. So I was, you know, I was going all over the place and I looked a little crazy. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take in the saddle, which is gonna be that matte bronzing shade. I'm gonna dip the F40 into this. Again, tap off the extra powder because this product a little goes a long way. They're very pigmented. All right, and the brush um, information, you guys, is on your screen right now if you wanna pick that up as well. Alrighty, so now are you still doing the kind of upwards? I am, so I'm taking the angle downward again, Okay. but I'm just going in a different spot on my cheek. So gotcha. kind of that hollow of the cheekbone that I mentioned, that's where I'm gonna be placing it. Okay. And I do kind of make a little bit of a fishy face fishy when face, I do it, right? just so it's easier for me to find the hollows of the cheekbone. Some people have just beautiful definition